dealing with the work of uh, Philippe Barthelmy, uh, Sylvia Grino, and Eric Carlson. Um, you have probably already seen uh, the exhibition, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, uh, showing some of the recent work of the practice. I first came across the, uh, uh, the work of, uh, uh, of the practice a few years ago, looking through a magazine, and saw um, a uh, gymnasium uh, sports center that was, uh, I can't remember in, in which publication, and uh, noticed the, the incredible kind of uh, beauty of the project, but all of it achieved with incredible kind of minimalism and attention to, uh, to detail and the materials of the, of the building. And I think this is really, in a sense, a very important aspect of uh, the work of, uh, of the practice, which has been involved uh, with, the, uh, with the revision of modernism, but one that is now going much further beyond kind of stylistic ideas and becoming much more involved with uh, the question of, uh, of materials in a way uh, that was rare to find in, in certainly uh, a great number of, uh, of the kind of the heroic aspects of, of, of modernism. I also think that the projects of the firm are very interesting in terms of their engagement, particularly with social housing. This is something that I think us, we in Britain, have not been able to uh, have the possibility of really finding out what are the uh, opportunities for us now uh, in terms of the, the project of social housing because most of what we remember are from the, from the 50s and the 60s and a lot of those are not really good experiences now. So it is very interesting, especially for example, I was seeing uh, one of the projects in Bercy not so long ago to see that there is uh, such an important contribution that is being uh, uh, really made uh, to the field of housing. Um, so without further delay, we really look forward to seeing a whole series of projects, including many more uh, gymnasiums as well as housing projects that uh, the, the firm have been working on. And uh, I would like you to join me in welcoming uh, Philippe, uh, Sylvia, and Eric uh, on their lecture. Well, good evening. Thank you for your nice introduction. My name is Sylvia Grignot. I work uh, with Philippe Barthélemy, who teaches here in the Architecture uh, Association uh, this year. Uh, I can introduce uh, Eric Carlson, who worked uh, with us for the last four years. Uh, this evening, we are going to talk uh, particularly of two projects of uh, exhibition art, uh, an art gallery uh, in the Marais, uh, which is called Garexi Pass, and an Icelandic uh, museum of modern art. We also work for a lot of other projects that we will present to you a little bit in a conclusion. Uh, to tell you, we started the office in 1986. The development of our office is a very traditional one in France. We were chosen for the Albums de la Jeune Architecture by the Housing Ministry and for the Villa Medicis hors le Mur from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Both, both of these awards allowed us to be invited to competitions, which is the way we get the work in our office. Uh, we have two exceptions of this that are the two projects uh, in uh, modern art, the gallery and the museum in Iceland. I'm going to talk to you about uh, the Gallery Xi Pass in Paris. We first became involved with this project by meeting the client as an art collector. After visiting a loft renovation that we constructed, he proposes to us to design a gallery in Paris for his collection. We discussed a lot, excuse me, we discussed a lot about the exhibition of art and the role of the architecture. Here begins the question for us of the role of the architecture in exhibition art. Should the architecture compete with the pieces of art for attention? or should the architecture be completed in the background? The site, excuse me, the site, uh, it was an existing building in the Marais uh, in a courtyard of the street, tightly placed with neighboring buildings on all sides. After studying the existing space, the areas 
predisposed for exhibition were evident. This is the entrance. This is a very uh, space of exhibition. This is another one in the ground floor. On the upper floor, yeah. on the upper floor, we have all this space uh, with natural light with one side and with a wall uh, in the other side. On the lower level levels, there were smaller, clear geometric spaces that maximized the exhibition area. It was the other one. Uh, this very little spaces then. The, direct, the direction we chose was a somewhat modest one. How to maintain these uninterrupted exhibition spaces and how to connect them together. The strategy of the exhibition areas was for the architecture to hide. The work for the architecture, so to speak, disappears, but to do that takes a lot more work. For example, no, just the one. Yeah. for example, how to deal with a non-existent technical room. In this case, we have created one intermediate floor for the stairs. One intermediate floor for the stairs. The stairs themselves are raised and we find a place for the air treatment equipment. How to deal with the ventilation ducts and vents. In this case always, there are the ring wheels between the steps and between the stair and the wall. The thickness of the wall is used to integrate ducts and storage. Then, how to minimize the impact of the floor and the baseboard in a space of sculpture? We choose a neutral painted concrete floor without baseboard. Here's the first, no, it's here's the ground floor exhibition where we um, have made a very strict control of geometry. The exhibition hall is a perfect square around four existing columns, concrete painted floor and white uh, walls and ceiling. Here's the first floor exhibition space. The climatization is hidden in window sills and then the same uh, for uh, uh, white ceiling and white walls and a roughed wood floor. The strategy of the areas of circulation was to find a series of sequences between exhibition spaces. These photographs mo uh, shows you a very mon monumental staircase with the wood uh, steps and all the walls in white, very minim minimalism. We have seen in this first photograph, we created an intermediate, an intermediate floor in which we have a small exhibition room with a natural light. In the opposite side of the other monumental staircase, we have uh, this spiral staircase with a curtain metal rays. This is the corridor who goes to the ground floor space and uh, we can see the old roughed walls only painted and the construct between the smooth one in gypsum. I think you would, it's a very, not very nice photo, but we don't see very much. <laughs> to provide natural light in the ground floor, we have restored a small courtyard where we find a private access. We were allowed to use very rich materials uh, like this black African roughed uh, granite. We designed a very fine steel staircase. The lightness of this staircase contrasts with the massivity of the other ones. Yes, here you can see the very uh, staircase and steel uh, black painted and the rough to granite uh, on the wall. Another detail.
The gallery completed was visited by Hero, a famous Icelandic painter. Hero work and live in Paris. He is a free figurative painter. He explained to us that the Reykjavik City Council wanted to create a foundation to expose their very important Eros painting collection. This foundation will be located in a old dairy factory in the Reykjavik surrounding. Ero appreciate the work in Xipas Gallery and propose us to go in Iceland to give an, uh, our opinion on the possibility to transform the existing building. Following this first trip and a first proposal accepted by the City Council, we have been commissioned for the job and associated with Icelandic architects, VEA, in charge of the cultural center associated to the foundation. On the site, the impression was really strong. The building sit on the tundra surrounding by glacier and facing the ocean, ocean expressed a very powerful stability. We choose to keep intact the image of this building and decide to develop a system to provide natural light inside from the hidden, hidden roof slopes and from the existing courtyard. We create a new level in the courtyard, pushing the ground to, to the first level to provide light in the ground floor lobby. This is the existing courtyard and a perspective on the proposal. In the glass-covered courtyard, the stairs to cultural center take place. Our second idea on this project was to reinforce and develop the quality of the existing interior spaces. The two first level qualities is generated by the tension between the low ceiling, the vast floor, and the grilled of concrete columns. The third level quality is generated by the shape of the roof. Our main idea was to create from a very clear sequential circulation system, a diversity of space adapt to Eros painting specificity. A part of this specificity is, for example, the big size of the, some painting. We have some painting of three meters by 12 meters, or the, his paintings organization in series. Ero work with series during one period, and we have series of erotic series, we have series on Mao Tse Tung, we have series on airplane, and it's all this, all this painting are important when they are together in the same place. Stay. Um, I'm going to walk you through the building just to give you a sense of uh, the, the organization. Uh, starting at the ground level. Uh, from the photo you saw before that Philippe showed, there's sort of a vast uh, plane and the building sort of sitting on it. Uh, at the ground level, there's a kind of a continuation of that on the interior. Here you see a photo of the uh, existing lobby with the large concrete columns, uh, um, the ceiling at about uh, two and a half meters, and uh, a dimension of about 30 meters by 30 meters, so it's quite flat and quite, quite low. Um, and it's kind of a, also a pretty powerful experience that sort of is a continuation of, of the site. Um, in that low lobby, uh, we've installed a, a a sort of a narrow slot, a vertical stair that goes up then to the, uh, the upper level and to the, the center part of the building, which uh, contains the central space, which we use sort of uh, as an organizing element. It's, uh, it's a long, um, a long two-story space that's lit with uh, a skylight on the, on the gable, you can see there. Um, it supplies all of the exhibition spaces for Arrow the gallery wrapping around in a circular uh, circulation uh, format. It's, uh, it's quite long. It follows the, the thickness of the building. It's quite a large building. That's why they have these two courtyards that, that 
that are needed just to bring the light into it, especially in Iceland. At the end of this really long space, there's quite a large window that, that uh, punctures the, the thick concrete walls to allow views to the ocean um, upon mounting the stairs. It's, uh, it's really the only place in the building uh, where, you can, where you can get out, in a way, visually, because it was constructed for cows, essentially. Um, so I'm going to start to explain the four types of, of galleries that we, we put into this, this existing building. Um, there's, they're all sort of corresponding to Eros' work, as Philippe mentioned, the different sizes of paintings, and, and at the same time corresponding to uh, the existing structures and for, uh, spaces of the, the building. Um, it's kind of, it's difficult to talk about the exhibition spaces without, without talking about the lighting, and about, uh, without talking about also the, the similar things that Sylvia talked about in the gallery, um, ventilation, and the, those kinds of details, but here essentially you see the existing building with the, the two courtyards and the main center gable and then the, the two uh, bookend gables, also with these two ramps that were the entries uh, for the cows into the, into the building. And then just above that you have the central space which is the organizing uh, orientation space, and then above that the series galleries um, continuing on the, the next floor, uh, the same floor rather, another a low a uh, three meter high low space for for smaller changing exhibitions that that arrow can that arrow could use um, for other works that he does films uh, puppets quite quite a diverse range of other things and then going up you have the long galleries which kind of extend uh, following the, the gable slope of the of the roof On the top, you have the, the large spaces which house the, the larger format paintings. All of these are permanent. Uh, these top levels are permanent exhibitions. Um, all of them are, are, on the top level, naturally lit. We employed or worked with uh, George Sexton Associates, uh, quite a, I think it was a good experience, a good lighting consultant. Uh, he's done uh, the Sackler Gallery and the extension to the Sainsbury Center. Um, and he informed us a lot about a lot of things, sort of synthesizing the the technical aspects were some of the intentions. Um, and Arrow 2 was pretty adamant about, about using light, especially daylighting. Uh, and uh, we learned a lot about daylighting and the, the nature that it, that it gives to the paintings. It's not actually a functional light. It doesn't, it doesn't allow you to see the painting so much as it, it, it gives a, a vibration because it's a changing light, unlike a, an artificial light. It gives the surface a kind of vibration that that gives it life, as, uh, as you would say. Um, so we try to integrate that as much as possible without, without affecting the, uh, the existing, uh, the external aspects of the building because it's quite an important monument for the people of Reykjavik. Reykjavik. Um, so starting with uh, the lower, lower spaces, We started with the lower spaces. The, the small ones, the small boxes, series galleries, are uh, for the smaller paintings, such as this one, uh, where he could have, uh, as Philippe mentioned, some of his themes. And you could uh, proceed through these galleries in a, in, a, in a circular motion as you move through the gallery. I'm just going to run through. This is maybe about a meter by uh, 80 centimeters or, or 70 centimeters. Gives you a sense of Vera's work. Um, this is a scape. It's, it's a bit larger. Uh, this is, uh, I think, about six, six meters by four meters, or seven meters by four meters. And this is, um, this is a 13 meter long painting that's for the larger galleries. In the, in the lower series galleries, you have, uh, you have a, a, a window, a small window that, that sort of punctuates the facade. There we had to develop um, Sit there. But actually, the window was here in thickness. We had to develop a way to close that off because uh, you have to have a certain amount of control over the UV, the UV that gets onto the uh, the painting, um, ultraviolet. And so we developed some lure systems within that thickness, trying to integrate it also into some of the technical needs for the building. But uh, the lighting was primarily in the, those zones, uh, artificial lighting, which we used because of the low ceilings. 
um, a, a recessed lamp that also had some flexibility. It's, it's quite a small sow, but there was some capacity to, to fluctuate within that, that ceiling plane. There you see the series gallery below um, and the window section. The, the larger center gallery, which is also low ceiling and, and uh, 12 meters by about uh, 9 meters, had a, a, a flexible, well, it was a flexible program. So the lighting also had to be flexible. We developed the bands of ceiling panels that we could close or open for the lighting needs. Um, here, here on top, you see the, the, the long galleries. These were for some of the scape paintings, longer paintings also supplied by uh, quite a deep well lighting uh, uh, natural light, which also integrates the, the um, artificial light. The set of louvers, a bi-directional set of louvers is what separates you from the directly looking up into the natural light and, and keeps, uh, keeps that, that aspect of the building from becoming obtrusive for, for the viewer. section of that. We, we actually developed this, this project uh, into construction documents. It's, it's quite well developed. Uh, we, we struggle again here with the technical integration like in the gallery Xipas. The heating and air system were very important here because of the climate. The building is exposed throughout the year to very strong wind from the sea. Consequently, the fresh air intake is very important. And we find a way to integrate the system in, the, in this in the background. The air transportation is done in the double wall surrounding all the space. The wooden floors are interrupted at two centimeters of the wall. There is no baseboard and we use this space to vent to vent, vent the fresh air. We have tested this solution in a Danish laboratory with cold smoke to film the air flue and so to determine the ideal shape of the opening. In this, in this project, in a very different context, we have developed the same idea than in the gallery Xipas. The, the direction we chose was somewhat modest one to create a background for the art. We had a lot of fun studying this project with uh, Icelandic architects, engineers, and clients. Uh, all the studies has been done. Everything is ready to build. But unfortunately, everything seems to be stopped now. So now we can propose to you to, to see other projects in Paris. So this project is the first competition we, we win uh, with Sylvia. Uh, this competition was for to build a sports center and, um, and um, an open air physical training ground. So as you can see, the, the, this is a part of a redevelopment program in a somewhat chaotic district of Paris, not far from La Villette. It's a ZAC. What we call in ZAC in France is a zone where all the urban uh, rules are very strong. There is a chief uh, architect, and so we have to respect a certain number of uh, consideration. As you can see on the site, there is an existing uh, row of housing. No, no. Okay, all the, um, all the, um, the site is set between, uh, between a cemetery. All that is a big cemetery. So we have some trees. We have some trees at the uh, entrance of the cemetery. And as you can see, we had a very small access on the street. So um, we place, first of all, we place, first of all, we place the uh, open, uh, open physical training ground on the first part. On the rear part, we have the uh, sports center. And all the services are for the sports center and for the uh, open air are concentrated in a very long needle, which reconstitute with the uh, existing housing what we call a villa in Paris, which is a, it's a street without end. 
we have uh, plant uh, trees at the beginning of the open field and to have a continuity with the trees which are in the entrance of the cemetery. And uh, in the entrance of the, uh, of the site, we have a very large monumental canopy and we have the house of the, Car the Caracutacurus Lodge to signal the otherwise discrete street presence and uh, to signal the existence of the, equip of the equipment. So. so here you can see the plan. So we have the entrance, the entrance lobby in the middle, the open air field, the indoor field, and we have all here all the lockers and toilet and services. So you see the section. This is the construction. This, this is a view from the open air field. So all around the limits of the open air field are made by the building by himself, by the uh, needle of the uh, services, and also by the big fancy of the uh, open field. This is a detail of the uh, facade on the uh, open field. Uh, all the circulation are, uh, have a natural light as view on the open field. So the, the sports people come directly from the lockers, for, from the uh, uh, changing room <laughs> to the open field. This is the view on the main staircase inside. As you can see, all the materials are very cheap. It's only concrete, it's only painting, it's the most basic plastic floor, and uh, everything is very cheap because it's a public construction for the town, so there is no money. <laughs> so this is the um, system of uh, structure. We wanted to make a, a small hello to Baltar because we are not far from the La Villette, uh, where we can find the last, uh, one of the last uh, hall of Baltar. And we decide to, to work with the steel structure, which is uh, very light. We have uh, multiplicated the system of trusses in order to carry a Swedish system of uh, cladding. All the roof is galvanized steel. We have only plywood on the wall of the sports center to protect the uh, sports people. So you have uh, here, we can see the, uh, on the corridor on the left, we, you have the circulation for the changing room. And uh, we have plywood all around, the, all around the main hall. We have the opportunity after this uh, sports center to develop other, other ID because in France when you, when you have the opportunity to build something and to, to make uh, some advertising, to have some publication, you have the chance to be invited to to other competition for sports center. Now we are specialists for sports center. So we, uh, we have made uh, last year seven competition for sports center and uh, we win uh, three or one. And so now uh, perhaps next year I can present you on um, two other one uh, because we have uh, now we have sports center to build. So it's uh, our chance. <laughs> so uh, this is another um, um, other project. We, um, we are working since, uh, since two years now on uh, social housing in France. And uh, social housing uh, in, in Paris is, um, is really a command for architects. There is a, there is a, lot, there is a lot of competition for that. So, and uh, there is a zone in Paris where there is a, now a very important development. This zone is the east of Paris. So we see on this view, we have here the um, new Ministry of Finance, which is, which is this long needle. Here you have the Seine River, you have the Palais Omnisport. Here you have the uh, new American Center from uh, Guéry. And all that is the new Bercy, uh, Zach Bercy. And on the other part, as you can see here, you have the big library, which is uh, in construction and you have a new development area which is here, which is called Zaxen Rive Gauche. So here, 
Here you can see the first part, which is called Zach Bercy. Here you have the uh, new American Center. Here you have a park which has been built in the uh, uh, all this part of Paris before was the place where we have to it was storage for wine. So as you can see, it's a big place. <laughs> and uh, now we have um, all the storage leaves the capital, and uh, there is all that was a new ZAC, which means in French zone d'aménagement concerté. It means that there is a there is an architect here. It was Jean-Pierre Buffy who dict uh, a certain number of rules to build, uh, to build housing. So here you have the first construction has been um, very often published, and it was, uh, you have here construction from Seriani, here construction from port en parc here construction from uh, Du Sapin Leclerc, here you have Yves Lyon, here Fernando Montes, Amouten. So, and uh, we have the chance to build this one. <laughs> We are not on the park, we are behind, always in the background. <laughs> and so um, it was a chance because uh, it's a program of social housing. You have a few categories of social housing in France, and this, this one are the it's a small middle class, and this, this one is really low middle class. And so, so this is the other side. On the other side, we, we can see the new library. So this is the plan, uh, the plan of the of the ZAC. So as you can see, it means that when you have to build in this area, you have to be chosen to to build there, and you have to work with the rules of uh, edicted by Jean-Pierre Buffy. So um, in our case, we have another difficulty that we we were not lucky because we were exactly at the articulation of two ZAC. It means that we have two architects in chief. So we have to deal on this street with Jean-Pierre Buffy and on the other one with Huet, which is not exactly the same uh, tendency. So we have to make the corner, which is not so, so easy. So another situation. So um, the particularity of the site is that we have a uh, uh, on, the f on the street, we have a south facade with, tr with uh, very big trees, which is a very, uh, really a chance. But we have also uh, some, uh, a, very bad, uh, a very bad site on the rear of the building because uh, there is a, a place with, tr with truck. And so uh, we, we work a lot to find for all the flat to, to find a, f a good orientation. So here, uh, facing the church, uh, we have uh, what, what I call um, a large screen of glass making a loggia and making a second facade uh, for, the in for the flat. Uh, this uh, double facade is, um, we justify that because of the, of the noise on the place. There is a lot of uh, circulation in this area be because just after, just after the place there is a tunnel uh, and it's one of the m most important connections between Bercy, which is a little uh, uh, ink. Uh, how can I say that? Enclave. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, there it's a really a very noisy place. So the reason we decide to, to, to give to the, to the flat this second skin, which is, uh, which is equipped by a system of jealousy, so this is a place on the Place La Chambody. So this is the interior of the double skin with the system of ventilation and we can close that and open. And so here you can see the problem that we were on the Place. We have uh, three levels less than on the street. So we have to deal with that for the corner. Um, on this main uh, facade, uh, we, were, we are on the uh, sunny side, and uh, we, have to, um, to, we have to work with some uh, corniche, which was uh, imposed by the uh, chief architect. And so we decide to, to, to take these rules and to, to build uh, what we have called an active grid. Uh, active because it's a, it's a protection for the sun, uh, it's also a system to, who can give some individuality to each balcony. 
there is a big hole between each balcony. So with this big hole, uh, the, the on the, this little part only, the sun is not pro the, the the sun is not uh, the flat is not protected by the sun in a small corner in each living room. So you have a just a, a small small touch of uh, sun in the living room because of this hole, and this hole provides also some uh, individuality to each balcony. So the the construction is very simple because we it's uh, social housing. We have some uh, galvanized steel on the for the balcony, and we have an aluminium cladding on the uh, on the um, on the two first level and on the duplex level. All that is built with a precast concrete, uh, with, which is made with a white concrete with um, some little part of uh, Carrar marble. So all this, uh, this cornish, which are precast, are um, built in the same time that we, uh, we cast the concrete for the floor. So it's... Uh, was, uh, it was easy to do that. We don't have any problem with this precast system. So this is, you can see here the, the cladding of the two last level, the duplex flat. So here you see again the, the hole between the two flat and uh, we have a void between each balcony has a void and, uh, and uh, is a... Uh <coughs> So this one is the last competition we win. Uh, this competition is in the... I have to reverse, sorry. Uh, this competition will take place at the place of the white tent. We, 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 um, you know, there is now a program of uh, social housing all around the, the big library, and uh, our program will take place in this uh, in this area. It means that we have a facade on the Boulevard Vincent Auriol with the metro, and also a facade which is very noisy. And then we uh, we will be um, on the other side. We will have a garden from uh, Devigne. And then we have um, some, um, there is some housing program made by, uh, here you have uh, uh, Philippe Gazo, here you have Solaire will build something. Uh, there is uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Buffy built something here, Pierre Gagnier, Morios, uh, Jacques Ripo, and we, we have something here. So we win this competition in last April. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of controversy in this ZAC and on the urban plan. Uh, we, uh, we have been invited in this competition. So we do the competition, we win the competition. And uh, the... The site is very strange because it's a mixed program. We have a school and we have housing. And it's really strange in such a new area to have a mixed program, to have a school and to have six floor of housing on the top of the school. But it was a program we have to deal with. <laughs> uh, so uh, we, um, the school of 12 class classes occupied the ground and the first floor of the parcel. Its location in large glassed facade act as a horizontal datum to the sloping site below. Sixth floor of housing above and the adjacent park of Michel de Vigne. The apartments are for the most part open to two facades, allow for evenly distributed natural lighting and access to balconies with again southern exposure. The balconies uniformly compose themselves on the facade, reinforced horizontally with planter seeded with midget bamboo. The duplex apartments at the upper level are accessed by an exterior walkway you can see here and the duplex apartment uh, benefit from the transversal double exposure and uh, also balcony two, two level on, on balcony so 
So here you can see the uh, duplex flat with the, the corridor, which is exterior, covered and exterior. This corridor is covered by a, um, by a polycarbonate system of glass. So here we have uh, all, the, you know, it's a new area, but we have to deal with the construction here. We have to deal with another construction here. We have to deal with another construction here. So it means that we have only this facade and this corner, and the school is down. So this is a bad perspective of the school. So where we can see all the glazing, you can see the library behind. This is a bad perspective on the flat, on the duplex. So you can see that we have a, a concrete system uh, and again, uh, all the construction now will be in conc precast concrete white. So we have a system of balcony and uh, we have a totally open uh, glass facade on this, between, this, uh, between this balcony. And on the other side, we have duplex flat with uh, two balconies. That's all.